Hey everybody, it's George the Tech. I've got a special one for you today. We're going to demonstrate with the help of Austrian Audio's OC818 and my assistant, who actually has the Austrian Audio OC818, Andrew Peters. Uh, we're going to be able to demonstrate the microphone and its amazing Polar Pilot app. Say hi, Andrew. Cool. Hello, George. Hello, everybody. Nice to be here. Tell me so far, how long have you had the OC818? Um, I've probably had it for about two months, I'm guessing, somewhere around there. And we've done a little um, bit of testing of it on the Pro Audio Suite, our podcast. We have indeed. Yeah, because I, I've talked to you about this before, but when I put this mic up, I um, immediately was blown away, I've got to say. I do have a, a vintage 414EB. It doesn't have the brass capsule, which is what they've tried to emulate with this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um but they're not, the, oh, I've sent you the file, you've heard it. They're yeah. not that dissimilar. I mean, this one has probably, it's a bit brighter, but it certainly has all the bottom end. In fact, the two mics that we ran against this, up against it, were um, a Microtech Gefell, which has the M7 capsule for any geeks out there that are into microphone technology. I'm sure there'll be the, a few uh, of them watching this, Andrew. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure, guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that has the M7 capsule, which was designed by Norman for the U47. Uh, many, many, many moons ago. Right. And then we used the, the 414EB as well. And I kind of thought this sat somewhere in the middle. Uh, it's got that beautiful M7 sheen, and then it has that, you know, rich sort of lower mids of the 414, the early 414s, not the current ones. Yeah, well, the 414EB is sort of one of those holy grail mics that, you know, they're not, they're, they've been, they're not made anymore, right? That's a vintage mic, and it yep. has a tone that people are finding now that they love, and they're very yep. flat, uh, not overly bright. So this mic yep. kind of fits, uh, yeah, it's the Goldilocks, <laughs> as it were, maybe, between them. So what's um, going on is the iPad, using Bluetooth, is communicating to a little Bluetooth module that plugs into the back of the OC818 that loads the settings in. you might be able to see. In. Yeah, it's, it's just barely seen on your video. It's The thing is yeah. so small, and it's obscured by the shock mount, so you can't see it yep. that well. But there's a little thing sticking off the back. That's only plugged in for this process. It's just for programming the unit and setting your own custom polar pattern. Um, yeah. Once it's loaded, right, This is it's loaded into the mic's memory. Internally, you can remove the Bluetooth module, and it's now locked in there, right? You can, It stays in there permanently. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. I haven't removed the dongle, so I don't really know. But I'm, I, that's what I kind of gathered from the videos I've watched from Austrian Audio. That's how it um, yeah, works. Exactly. So which you is have pretty cool. a duplicate on the screen, essentially, of the controls that are physically on the mic. So at the bottom yeah. there, we have a, a, um, a high-pass filter slider. We have a pad slider, which has 0, 10, and minus 10, and minus 20. And we have a the polar pattern slider. So yep. let's see what happens when you adjust those on the screen, what we see on the image. So Okay. So if I for a, out of interest I'll go for the polar pattern. And oh, I and it's a it's, smooth, gradual adjustment. Yeah. Yeah. And I did see Martin Seidel talking about this and they based this idea on the very early C twelve which used to have a box in the control room uh, with almost an infinite polar pattern. Yeah, it, had a a, it has a power supply for that tube yeah. mic and then a dial on the front where you can do this. Yeah. Exactly. So this is so doing now, this via a digital on-screen control and analog inside the microphone. It is changing the polarization of these two uh, capsules, right? It's a yeah. dual capsule mic. And so as you slide the slider, it's changing, as I understand, the phase yep. of one of the capsules. And so now Indeed. we are in full omni mode. But if you look in the top right corner, you'll yeah. see there's a spinning wheel. That's the microphone, which I didn't know when I first did it, which was a trap for young players. Um, now it's in full omni because the spinning wheel's gone. Right. So it takes so, a moment for the change to write, get written yeah. to the microphone. It's not a yep. live thing. And no. yeah, so you have to let it write. So it's kind of a slide, wait, test kind of a scenario. And that might be just a limitation is... of that Bluetooth module, you know? Yeah. But this is full omni. So if I'm moving around the mic, um, 
there you go. It's it is very omni. omni. And what's yeah. interesting about Omni for folks that don't know it in Omni mode, the mic the mic basically has no proximity effect, so you yeah. can really move around in and out, side to side. And the sound will nary will nary vary will not vary much at all, only in volume. So yeah, not too many cases for voiceover. I think where that would be that handy, unless you're recording an extremely expressive actor who had a lot of movement. Maybe that would be useful. So but it could be handy for yeah. podcasting. It definitely could be handy if you're doing a, an interview with more than one person too. Yeah, right. Just put the mic in the middle of you know the, between everybody and. Yeah, that would, I would call that fun. bluegrass mode. Um, yes, because <laughs> that's a popular thing to do. Is like you'll have a, a group of musicians playing bluegrass, and yep. you'll see this nowadays in live performance um, on stage. It's a popular thing to do now. They'll plop down one large diaphragm condenser mic stand on stage, and they will all play and they'll move in when they have their solo, and then they'll back away and yep. sort of they dance around the microphone. So, so that's where yep. you would look at this, but. And then we started it all the way at the other end in figure eight, which means super front and rear pickup and totally dead from the side. So put it back in figure eight again and then show okay. everybody what it sounds like when you're speaking into the side. So we'll let it write to the, the right the change yep. to the mic there. The spinning wheel. Sounds like it's already done it because I could hear a, a very, very soft thump, I yep. think, when yeah, it I just heard that. changes. Yeah. And now... I think it's done, even though it shows it's still changing. So try uh, sure. that let side. Me, let me try. Yeah. I can side address. Oh, yeah. It's, it drops yeah, away it's rather there, rapidly. Yeah. Yeah. I think this is a very clever pattern to use when you have a less than ideal studio. If you've got yeah. a small ISO booth with a big glass door on one side, putting it in this pattern will tune, tune out the reflection off the door. There's something about figure eight. I just like the sound of figure eight on this mic. I don't know. It's Maybe got it's just personal more preference, but... proximity effect um, yep. when you when you use figure eight. I, I call it more reach. So it's like you can be further away from the mic, and it still sounds like you're you're getting that really intimate sound, but at a little bit further distance. So you can be back away, have a little bit more room to move. I, I like figure eight a lot as well. I've been recommending it a lot. So yeah. now we're going to cardioid. Cardioid. There we go. We're in cardioid. And you can hear immediately. I can hear the difference. It, it's in my, yeah, in my ears, I can hear it. It's quite different. So, yeah. So now hearing. a little less of that proximity effect. It's not quite as rich or maybe low and heavy. Is that what you're yeah. getting? What uh, What I'm hearing is, and, it, and it, this is completely subjective, of course, and we're also gauging on our own hearing, sure. as we know. Historically, mine is not perfect. But um, I hear when I'm in uh, figure eight, I just it just seems to have, it seems to be a bit more three-dimensional, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't find that in cardioid. I find it just a bit you know, more flat. Yeah, th there, there are going to be like very subtle EQ differences when you change these patterns. It's not just the pattern. There's going to be slight changes in EQ. I know that. So this is yep. now what you'd probably consider like hyper or hyper super cardioid, cardioid yeah. or something. So to me, that is sounding more like we're heading towards figure eight. To me, I can hear a little bit more top end. I don't know what you're hearing, but that's yep. what I think I'm hearing. Yeah, it's quite nice, actually, hyper cardioid. Don't mind that at all. It's funny. You know, people think of, when they think of hyper cardioid, super cardioid, shotgun mics, they think... It's super directional. It's only going to pick up what's in front. But as you can see, that's not the case. You still no. get a bulb, a pickup in the rear, you know, when you're using those yeah, patterns. Yeah. It takes a lot of experimentation, but um, I'm definitely agreeing folk, that the figure eight is, is, a, is a winner in your setup. I think, yep. it sounds, I think it sounds brilliant. Yeah. So if we go back to figure eight, and I, I think oh, it's think switched. It's I think it's already gone there. I think it there. switches yeah, there it is. far more quickly than the, the little interface would tell you. Yeah. So then I've also got uh, a high pass filter. Actually, we should. Do you want to? Should yeah. we do the pads or the okay, high pass? Okay. Well, let's let's go to pad because this is something we're probably rarely going to use for VO. But so, and I know I've I've seen this tested before, and I've tried it myself. It does take a little while to kick in. Uh, the pad right. is quite slow, but once you get into the minus ten. Um, it's much quicker to go to minus 20. 
I don't oh, know. Oh, and, and, it, and it's not a f- switch. It's fading down. Yeah. And gradually. You gradually, gradually, gradually. Fascinating. Uh, Look at that. It's, yeah, it's really, really, there you go. And I reckon that, you know, this would be great if you are needing to go from doing, say, narrations, commercials, to now doing characters and games. Yep. To be able to just set one setting and it would change. Now, yeah, it dropped away quite a bit now. Yeah, so it's very quiet now. I, that, I'm, I'm agreeing with you. If you've got a read where it's very intimate and then you have to yell, this could be a really handy setting just to be able to operate from your phone while you're in the process of recording. Yeah, I mean, if your mic preamp is not handy, um, this would be a pretty cool way to, to compensate even yeah. on, even on the fly, I don't I don't know how often I've ever told anybody to play with their mic gain or their settings on the fly, but maybe uh, for certain scenarios it could be cool. And yep. then you have a high pass filter which is on eighty right now. Um, yep. Crank it all the way up to one sixty. Let's hear the setting you'll probably never use. Yep. So it's one sixty. Wow. And that seems that's... to happen instantaneously, pretty much. Yep. So that's at one sixty, and it's. Wow, that's pretty. Um, no, it brittle. sounds like a totally different mic. It sounds yep. very band pat. It sounds very thin, and maybe like for radio, some people might use this. I don't know, but yeah, it's yeah, too thin. yes, yeah, too thin. I usually go to eighty. Uh, you probably don't need to. In fact, I could go, I'll just turn it off. So the high so pass filter zero, off. you get all the way down in the basement. Now, yeah, <laughs> we're getting so, the, all the low end. Yeah, so you, oh, I can hear it. You have um, the voice for it. You yeah, wouldn't so, hear much of a difference with my voice. But with your <laughs> voice, there's that last octave there that just appeared. Yeah. Yep, that's there, all right. I can hear it. Um, so if I go to 40, it's probably not going to do very much at all. It's not going to do a whole hell of a lot, right? Yeah. No. And then if I go back to 80, yeah, okay, you can hear it. It's just taken away that really. It takes away the very thing. low, low, low end of the voice. Yeah, you know, I find Which is interesting. producers take it away pretty much all the time anyway when they're doing a mix. They don't want a lot yeah. of rumbly stuff. Well, it's funny because uh, Robbo, who does the podcast of Pro Audio Suite with us, uh, whenever he works on my voice, he instantly takes anything below 80 out. Mm-hmm. So, Yeah, I mean, for clarity's sake, when you're trying to fit a lot of voices together and make things match, it, it does make a lot of sense. So yeah. uh, the other thing we didn't mention is at the very bottom of the screen, there's an override yeah. uh, meter. And it that's keeps track cool. of when you had an override. So that's kind of cool. Not that you're going to keep an eye on this during a session, maybe as a voice actor, yeah. but as an engineer to know if the mic... I mean, it's very unusual to know when the microphone itself clips. It's one thing to see it in your DAW or to even see a overload on your preamp, but to see it on the mic is actually yeah. pretty clever. So then we've got a few other buttons I just haven't explored. There's at the top, there's this looks like a save, and then there's like a picture of some books, and then a question mark. <laughs> so I guess save look. saves this pattern, right? So a save settings. Here you go. Here you so can you save, want to your save current that. settings and yep. recall them later. Yep. Uh, very cool. Now, and then oh, there's Bluetooth dongle manual. Oh, there's that's the, the manual. Books. Okay, that's the manual. And then so, if you've got a question, essentially you, you can store this to your hard drive, so you could have more than one polar pattern settings saved that you might want to use but once you've made these adjustments this is now on the mic and my understanding is now you can unplug that bluetooth module completely and yep. that setting is now the custom setting um let's see please be aware that these settings will be stored on the device your last setting will be the one accessible offline in the black dot preset mode yep so on the front of the mic there's uh, the, the different, you know, there's cardioid, hypercardioid, omni, figure eight, and there's also a preset mode. And so yep. that's where you can access your your pattern of choice. So, you know, they give you fag figure eight out of the box, right? Yeah. So you're pretty much good to go. But in your if you have a situation where you want to find a specific pattern that works a little bit better, that's somewhere between one of the four patterns that it already has, you can do that. Yeah. You can find the perfect um, in between. So this is, you know, this polar device is great because you you know you've got such a I think it's 250 variations of the polar patterns using the the polar pilot as opposed to the ones on the mic. Right, yeah. So that's pretty cool. It is remarkable. 
So in the end, you're, you're getting the ability to change the polar pattern from the mic, and it's in the hardware. It's something that could be set permanently and locked into the mic, no matter what pattern we end up choosing. And yep. as you can see, we're doing this remotely. Um, I could theoretically, with another actor who has the mic, have them read in their booth. We would, I would have them change the setting. We would go through the different modes while I listen in real time, and then we would choose the one that sounds the best for them save yep. it in the mic and now it's essentially like a customized mic pretty sweet very sweet indeed yeah so this this demonstration was all about the polar pattern app there's it gets way deeper than this right i mean they have yes. a plugin <laughs> that not only lets you control one polar pattern it lets you control five different bands you know from low yep. frequency to high and it divides that into five slices each with its own polar pattern. So the polar palette is very simplified and simplistic in comparison. The, the, the plug-in is, takes it to a whole nother level. It is quite bizarre. We've played with this before. but uh, So where the Bluetooth dongle goes in, it's a, a mini XLR. Right. Uh, you get a separate cable with a mini XLR and then a, a standard XLR. Right. And so you plug it, if you've got a dual preamp, uh, you plug, plug the back into one and the front into the other and record a stereo, uh, stereo channel, a stereo recording. Yeah, like you, and you then get both. in post you can mm -hmm. play around and yeah, do a mix. It's really cool. We had a lot of fun with it on on the Pro Audio Suite. I don't remember which episode, but if you go to the ProAudioSuite.com, search for OC eight one eight, you'll find the episode yeah. and you get to hear us saying, "Well, this is my favorite setting. This is my favorite <laughs> setting." As we all compare our our, our versions. But um, really remarkable microphone. This microphone is a result of a team of engineers who rose from the ashes, like the phoenix, yeah. <laughs> yeah. after they were, uh, you know, let go from um, their parent company. I guess Harman Kardon. Off they go, and these guys regrouped. And I thought that's pretty. That is remarkable, right? But these are really cool. I mean, you can see tons of videos on these. But I, that capsule is really, really clever because what they've done is they've limited down to three screws. The actual ring is ceramic, so um, you know the issues I've always had in the past with brass is it gets affected by temperature and weather and all the oh, you know, yeah, external it's environmental metal, problems. So it responds to all that stuff, right? So this one doesn't, which is great. So um, and yeah. they're also they've they've tuned the capsule to be um, half a dB uh, plus or minus. So you can actually get a matched pair from a mic from two years ago, and they will match. Incredible. Well, so. this was a lot of fun. We had a little it trouble was. getting it yeah. up and running at first. We had to do a little <laughs> experimenting did. with the Bluetooth module. We're thinking first-gen product, brand-new design. We'll give them a little bit of a pass on some of the some of the bugginess with the Bluetooth communication for now. But, yeah. um, you know, we got it working, and the results are pretty, pretty awesome. It is a great, great-sounding mic. So... Yep. I know you are a mic, you are a mic aficionado. So I'm just you've a, tried a lot of mics, <laughs> right? It's I was yes, it is ridiculous. I do have a lot of mics, and I've used a lot of mics. Yeah, it's just I think it just shows how technology marches on, and the ability to create incredible mics with less investment um, in, in R and D and equipment, and is you know that's just the, that's progress. Yeah. Well, this has been fun. Thanks, Andrew. I really appreciate you taking the time uh, on your Saturday morning and my Friday evening, I guess. Yes, indeed. Well, that was a cool uh, demonstration. Thanks, Andrew. I had a lot of fun. This has been George the Tech. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you want to see more of what I do, you can get just subscribe on the channel. You guys have heard that plenty of times. Subscribe, like, do all that stuff. Facebook, uh, Twitter, it's all George the Tech all the time. And uh, if you need any support with setting up your OC818 or anything else with your home studio, reach out to me at georgethe.tech. Thanks again, and we'll see you on another one. Take care. Yes, yeah, so we're doing this uh, using multiple technologies because I know you guys watching love how the sausage is made. So we're using, <laughs> uh, for video capture, I just happen to be using StreamYard right now to capture his video. Um, we are using Source Connect now for high quality audio transmission. 
and we are using Splash Top to show Andrew's iPad, which is what he's using now to control the Polar Pilot software. It only runs on an iOS device at this time, I believe it. They don't have a Mac or Windows app. So that's why we had, we had to do a little extra hoop jumping to make this demo happen. But I think it's yep. going to be worthwhile because it's going to be cool to show Andrew adjusting the polar pattern of his mic through Bluetooth while he's actually talking into the mic. And we're all going to yep. hear it. I'm also capturing everything on the Rodecaster Pro. And Andrew, for redundancy's sake, is recording his audio back in Melbourne, Australia to his own system. So we got it. We are covered. <laughs> we are well We're covered. covered, well and truly. So yep. um, 